one of the Baalei Musa, one of the Talmidim of the Rabbi Saimi Salan, used to test himself as Bitachon in Hashem on a regular basis. To constantly show how there's no such thing as natural. So one day he's sitting in a train and he's waiting for the train. Another Jew st- you know, sits next to him. He goes, oh, you're going to go on the next train? Yeah. Where's your ticket? I don't have one. Well, you know you have to buy a ticket. They're not going to let you. You can't buy a ticket on the train. Once the train comes, it's not going to wait for you. He says, Bezat Hashem. Well, what do you mean, Bezat Hashem? The train's going to come in six, seven minutes. You have to buy a ticket. It takes at least five minutes to buy a ticket. You buy a ticket already. You're making me worried. You call that up. You can buy a ticket. He goes, Bezat Hashem. Bezat Hashem. Don't worry. Because okay, Bezat Hashem, okay, Bezat Hashem, Bezat Hashem, we're going to get on the train, it's going to take us to the destination, yes, for that, Bezat Hashem, but you have to buy a ticket, you can't not buy a ticket, Bezat Hashem, he keeps telling him over and over, Bezat Hashem, Bezat Hashem, one minute before the the, uh, the train comes, this guy, he's like, well, this guy he must be crazy, I don't know, he runs, come, here, here's a ticket, but listen, next time, don't be crazy, nobody else is going to save you. He says, I told you Be'ezat Hashem, only Be'ezat Hashem this time came by you. Next time will be a different crazy person. <laughs> Meaning that Hashem makes the supernatural look natural. One of the times that he went into the, the Sabmi Slavotka, went into the woods because he told himself, there's no way that Hashem is not going to allow me to learn Torah. I'm going to go into the woods and Hashem is going to make light in the woods for me to learn Torah. This is a very famous story from about a hundred, a little over 120, 140 years ago. He went into the woods, everybody knew he's going into the woods, going into, staying there with nothing, just his books, no candle, no nothing. To go test this emunah and bitachon and Hashem, Hashem is going to make light for him, just like he did Maaseh Bereshit. Hashem says, let there be light. He's going to make light for me. How? It's not my business. He went into the woods. Little by little, night came. He's, no lights coming. He's, uh, little by little, the darkness came. No lights coming, no lights coming. But he's trying, he's, he can still read the words, can still read the words, can still read the words. Eventually, he got to a point where it was so dark, he couldn't read the words. So, he reached back just to see, maybe there's something behind him. And a hand gave him a candle. He took the candle and continued learning Torah for the rest of the night. And he brought the candle back with him. And the same little candle was lit for 25, 30 years. People saw the candle. For years it was lit. Never went off. He goes, yeah, it's the candle from the uh, forest. Remember I told you guys? He goes, yeah, yeah. Anytime somebody has beat the home problems, you go to him. Just look at the candle. Just look at the candle. Why? A hand came from Shemaim and gave him a candle. Because he believed it could be. He didn't believe in the natural. He didn't believe there's anything such as natural. There's only Hashem. There's only Hashem. Once a person realizes there, there's only Hashem, it becomes easier to serve Hashem. It becomes easy to believe in Hashem. And you stop relying on ourself. If we're stressed for five minutes over our money issues, that means we have no emunah in Hashem. The Gemara in Masechet Brachot says that if a person has food today, but is worried about what he's going to eat tomorrow, that simply means he has no emunah in Hashem. He's katon emunah, he has a little emunah, a little baby emunah. Why? Hashem gave you food today. Did he ask for your permission or your help to give you food today? No. He gave it to you though, right? So why are you questioning how he's going to do it tomorrow? Why? Because it doesn't make sense for you? Because the money, there's no money in the bank? Because the, all, the, all the shops are closed? Because it doesn't seem natural for him to give you food tomorrow? What makes it seem natural today? The reality is, Rabotai, is that the supernatural for the people that learn Torah and fulfill mitzvot is the same thing as natural. In the Gemara Masechet Ta'anit, we see there's a story about a person by the name of Nahum Ish Gamzu, famously known as a Gamzu Letova, where everything that would happen in the world, you would say, this too is for the good. No matter what would happen. One time there was a decree by the Goim to hurt Am Yisrael. And the rabbi said to Rab Nachum Gamzu, you deal with miracles. Why don't you go bribe this Caesar 
and uh, give him some jewels, give him some money, and uh, if there's miracles that are needed, because it's a very, very dangerous journey, you'll be the one that's safe to carry all this. And that's what Nachum Gamzu did. Baram Aseret page 21a, says, he took a case full of gold and jewels and started going. On the way, right outside the city, he stopped at a motel, And he slept there. In the morning, he took his case and went to the castle, waited his turn, showed up when uh, when the turn came. And the king said to him, yes, what can I uh, help you with? He says, I'm representing the Jewish people. We, uh, we had a decree that was uh, gonna increase our taxes and uh, do a lot of bad things for us, but we want the king to have some mercy on us. So to uh, respect the honor of the king, we brought you this present. So everybody's looking, there's hundreds of people there. What do they have? The Jewish people. He opens the case, the chest. He sees it's full of sand. It's full of sand. So he looks at the Chushka. This is what you bring me? You bring me sand? You knew you were bringing me sand? He goes, oh yeah, I checked the case in the morning and it had sand in it and I, I, uh, I'm bringing it to you. Meaning that it wasn't like new for Nachum Gamzu. He knew there's sand in it. Even though originally there was gold in it, now it was sand. But he said, if it's Hashem turned the gold into sand, Gamzu Litova, this too is for the good. So the king wanted to kill him. But one, right before he gave the decree, Eliyahu Navi dressed up as one of his soldiers and says, No, Your Highness, this is a Jew. Maybe the sand is like the sand of their forefather, Avraham. He goes, what, what sand is this? He goes, no, Avraham, he beat four kings. He beat four nations with sand. He goes, okay, let's check it. They took the sand. They threw it out the window and all turned into spears. Said, wow, what a gift. Thank you for the gift. Nachum Gamzu, make sure you fill even a bigger chest for him full of diamonds and jewels. I don't need the diamonds and jewels. Give it to them. I need the sand. I need the sand. Now, Nachum Gamzu knew there was sand there, and he knew that originally it started with gold. But why did it? Why did it? It didn't disturb him because he knew that both the sand and the gold came from Hashem. If it comes from Hashem, it has to be good, even if it's bad initially, even if it hurts a little bit initially. Now, how did Rabbi Chanina, Nachum Gamzu, all of these people get to such a level of holiness and purity? where literally the natural and the supernatural became the same thing to them. Because they took the Torah, not just seriously, but they took the zeirut, the carefulness that you must have with the Torah even more carefully than any one of us can even imagine. Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, one time, outside of the fence, there was a boy peeking through the fence. And he said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm just looking at the beautiful girl inside. He saw inside, what is he looking at? He's looking at Rabbi Hanina's daughter. Rabbi Hanina came inside his house and he told his daughter, My Biti, you're making Am Yisrael sin. Go back to the dust you came from. And she died on the spot. Why did he kill his own daughter? Why didn't he just tell her, close the window? Why don't you just tell her, listen, some guy is looking at you, why don't you be more careful? Why is it our fault that some guy is a uh, noef, he's looking at something that's not appropriate? Well, what's, what's this our fault? Because Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa knew it's better off for a person to die than for heart to make Am Yisrael sin. It's better off for Abba Yisrael to die, to never have kids, to never get married, to never have any future, to never have anything in the world, than to make Am Yisrael look at her for one second inappropriately. One second, one time. When a person is such a makpid, so careful with the Torah to such an extent, meaning he's careful with Am Yisrael to make sure that he doesn't lead them to sin. He's careful with himself to make sure he doesn't sin. He's careful with his family to make sure they all know what to do and not to sin. He's careful with all of the sins, even more so than the mitzvot. Then that means he has Yirat Shamayim. Once you have Yirat Shamayim, David HaMelech tells us in Tehilim, Hashem gives the secrets to the ones that fear Him. What secrets? Everything. Everything and anything you want.
B'Shem Hashem Nasev and Atzliach, we're very excited to offer you the new Bezat Hashem app 3.0. It's a newer, faster app, full of Torah, lots of Kedusha, by uh, the Shiwim that we do, myself, Rabbi Ephraim, Rav Chaim, uh, where you'll have uh, also newer features where you're able to use the app uh, while you're using other applications on your phone. You'll be able to share the uh, the lectures directly from the app. You'll be able to donate online and support our Cube and our Torah work that we're doing. And the most exciting feature is that you'll be able to actually ask questions directly on the app and get answers from the rabbis directly from the app. This is something unprecedented, and Baruch Hashem will be able to offer it. Thank you again for all of your support. Check it out. Make sure you have the kosher Torah that uh, will re-energize your neshama each and every single day. Call to B'chavat